It's your girl Bengali Black coming at you live from Bengali Black Studios. If you're wondering why my studio is set up like a Victoria's Secret today, I'll tell you. It's because today's episode is all about the bra. I'm talking about the titty chamber, y'all. One of my favorite things to do when I get home is unstrap this sucker and toss it to the side. So the other day I was wondering, why are we even wearing this thing in the first place? So in today's episode, I'm going to take you on the ins and outs of the bra. Okay, let's get into it. To understand the root of its purpose, we have to start at the beginning, the breast. Breasts are organs located on the chest and are a trait that both the male and female species have. The female breast is more developed than the male breast because the milk it produces is used to feed babies. But if breasts are merely a device to feed infants, why do we put so much emphasis on them? Why do we create devices to restrict and contain them? Well, to find out that, we have to take a journey through history to ancient times. As with most of our culture's civilization, we have to start with Egypt. In ancient Egypt, undergarments weren't even thought of. Clothing in ancient Egypt was already very expensive, so loose-fitting dresses and tunics were a popular choice in everyday fashion. Due to the hot climate, most people opted to go bare under their clothes, so wearing a bra would have never even crossed their mind. Not much is known about how Egyptians viewed breasts, but we can see in art that they were mostly depicted for religious reasons. It wasn't uncommon to see a woman nursing a divine figure or pharaoh, but other than that, breasts didn't create such a commotion as they do today. Throughout history, civilizations have tried to minimize the appearance of breasts. In cultures like China, a practice of chest binding was used to flatten shapely breasts and create more of a childlike frame. The preference of small appearing breasts was probably the inspiration of the dudu, a garment resembling a modern day halter top. It was used to cover and flatten a woman's chest area. Although this was born to restrict breasts, it was probably the first evidence of a decorated bra. These garments feature beautiful art, cultural symbols, bold colors, and intricate designs. Due to the conservative nature of the Chinese, these garments also helped women express themselves and empowered them. Chest binding existed in several cultures, which is why it's not surprising that someone thought to create a less painful device to create a binding effect around the breast. Fortunately, not every culture felt like titties were something to be ashamed of. Evidence of this can be found in ancient Greece and the Minoan civilization of Crete around 3,000 years ago. While most of the Western world was going free breasts, Minoan women used cloths made of leather or linen to support their breasts. These devices resembled a modern day sports bra. Minoan women didn't shy away from the beauty of their breasts. In fact, they celebrated them so much that they designed bras that would support and expose them at the same damn time. This style influenced Greece for centuries as many women opted to wear decorative breastbands around loose fitting clothing. This style was inspired by Aphrodite, who was rumored to make any man fall to his knees when she wore hers. The Grecians might have been one of the first cultures to sexualize breasts, something that continued on to modern times. Over in Rome, breasts were simply viewed as milk bags for babies. Breasts weren't celebrated or even considered outside of child development. But that didn't mean that showing a breast didn't garner some shock. Historical accounts claim that showing a disgruntled soldier your breasts could save you or your children's life. A bandu bra was a common staple of Roman fashion as a way to minimize the breasts. In Rome, big breasts were considered comical or a sign of old age, so small perky breasts were the trend. Roman women practiced chest binding to stunt breast growth and keep what they considered a youthful appearance. We've come quite the distance in how we view breasts. We no longer try to bind them down to minimize them, but we do do our best to try to shape them and create a more flattering appearance. This idea of beauty was inherited by the French in the 1600s. French women would use corsets to elongate their torso and push their breasts up until they are almost falling out their dress. They also appreciated a cone shape as opposed to the rounded shape that we prefer today. During the Edwardian era, women liked an S-shaped body, so they used girdles to push their torsos forward and push their hips backward. It sounds crazy and painful, I know. The things that we ladies do for beauty. Thankfully, one woman had had enough of this painful practice. The same year the monumental Eiffel Tower was erected was the same year another monumental event took place, the creation of the bra. Hermide Cadol was a French native who owned a shop that sold made-to-measure underwear. When Europeans started to set up colonies in Argentina, Hermide was all over it. She swiftly moved to Buenos Aires and set up a lingerie shop. She went back and forth to Paris to get materials and inspiration. At this time, Paris was at the center of the fashion game, so it was no surprise that Hermine's shop became the new hotspot for the fashion-forward colonists. It was here that Hermine decided to reinvent the corset design. 
She cut the corset in two pieces, one that would support the breast and the other that would shape the torso. She called the bra portion a corselet gorge and she debuted it at the exhibition of 1889 and it proved to be a huge hit. She decided to patent it and she soon became a celebrity bra maker to the most important figures of France. This design was emulated and duplicated by many inventors, but the one that we owe the most credit to is Mary Phelps Jacob. Mary was a New York socialite who was trying to wear a fly dress to a party. She tried on her corset under her dress and hated the way it looked, so she instead tied two handkerchiefs together to support her breast. At the party, everyone loved her new look and began asking where she got it. She decided to patent it under the name Brazier and sold it to the Warner Brothers Corset Company, which I found out is still one of the largest bra manufacturers to this day. Bras continued to evolve into different cup sizes, shapes, colors, and designs. Back in the day, people boasted the health benefits of wearing them such as posture and perkiness. There is however no medical evidence to support these claims. Instead, science tells us the opposite that using a bra can actually make your breast muscles weaker and prone to sagging. Still, I can't deny how empowered I feel when I put on the right bra and instantly feel more attractive. Although my favorite part of the day is taking my bra off, I can't deny that I wouldn't feel as sexy without the right bra for my everyday wear. This western standard of beauty is something that has expanded globally. Many women around the world empty out their bank accounts to be able to afford the best bras. It's unfortunate to think about the women around the world who can't afford them. A bra in the US ranges between $30 and $300, which in some countries is an entire monthly wage. This means that some women might go their whole lives with one bra or no bra at all. That is why I advocate for my followers to consider donating lightly used bras to one of the organizations I've listed below. Some donate to homeless women, some donate to women in third world countries, and some collect them for women to sell to create additional sources of income. I urge you to do your research and find the best organization that aligns with your personal values. Either way, you can't go wrong by donating a bra to a good cause and supporting a sister in need. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's history lesson on the bra. For more information, please visit the links below in my description and make sure to like and subscribe for updated content. Okay guys, I'll see you back here next time for some great food, some great fun, and some what? Great history. Bye!